All right, well, what, what started out with diagnosing a situation on a series DS cart controller model, solid state series cart, um, started out with a um, no forward, no reverse, but had a solenoid click. It had been raining outside and uh, the parts were covered with water. I uh, thought maybe it was an M core. I decided against the M core because I took the top plug off um, and it was and, and tested it and it was working fine. Um, <clears throat> although it was still intermittent sometimes with the uh, forward and reverse, the forward started working. And then it was just a reverse. Well, there was some question rather whether or not the reverse was controlled by the M core and I don't think it is. I think if it goes, it goes right on the M core. Anyway, I started looking at the forward and reverse switch. Um, this switch got hot several months ago and you can see right here, it did a little damage um, to the switch. It got hot and the reason why it got hot was because there was a loose connection in the back and uh, I figured that out and fixed it and we'd been using this cart um, and it had been working fine uh, every now and then there was a little hesitation when you put it into first you'd press the accelerator pedal and um, it, it would pause slightly then it would go and um, after you know some people would think oh that's going to be the M core I, I thought so too and it may be you know but uh, right now what's happening is I took the forward reverse switch off the cart I took this roll pin off the back uh, it goes right here there's a roll pin that goes in this hole I knocked it out with a punch and took this piece off like this if you're going to do this, make sure you keep those spacers. There's one on each side, a uh, bushing. There's one on each side. Well, when I did that, what I learned was these were dirty. I've since taken and cleaned them up with sandpaper real good. And they'll come off if you want, you know, rub them down like that on the sandpaper. Anyway, I cleaned all these up real good. It did have some melted plastic on the the tips and that melted plastic come from right here if you can see this was melted away and uh, this plastic although th this is a red hawk switch and i like the plastic on this switch a lot better than on some other cheap brands this switch is about 125 dollars it comes with all the micro switches and everything um, i just got this switch in may and um, i let this was loose I could tell it was heating up the front of the cart and uh, I got, you know, I realized one day it was hot and uh, figured out that this, this connection was loose. It's the one behind the handle. It was loose and it was heating up. And what it did was melted this plastic around the edge here uh, and it bubbled up a little bit. And when it was fine, it, you know, after a long ride, it heated up. And then when you go to switch it into forward reverse or switch, you know, put it in reverse, it wiped across that plastic and, uh, and caused uh, it not to have a good contact anymore. Well, ordinarily, you'd throw this switch away and buy a new one, but not me. Um, you know, determined to try to make it work again. I, uh, th this was the contact that was in here. Uh, you can see the bubbled up plastic all around it. It really got hot and it bubbled it up and it also bent the lug and uh, it was hot and so some of the threads came off right here. Um, I tried to fix it out on the beach actually. Uh, and you know this, this piece was bad and, and what was happening is it was countersunk too far down inside because the plastic melted away. 
uh, and it's sunk down to where it's not getting good contact anymore. Sorry about that. Let me hold it in the right direction now. It was uh, counter sunk down below where it sits in the plastic. And I think uh, it was not getting good contact right here. Um, so I knocked this out. It was melted in there. I knocked it out trying to save this Ford reverse switch because it's $125. Uh, I knocked it out. And then I, I uh, shaped a washer to sit down underneath this. I just put it on the grinder and shaped a washer to give this the height back that it needs. It's almost a little too high, but I'd rather it be too high than not high enough and get good contact there. Um, so I, I put that washer underneath this piece, put it back in the hole, and then tightened up the screws again. And uh, it, it's pretty close to where it should be now. It's not countersunk, so we'll see if it works. Um, and then I cleaned up these bus bars that had obviously gotten hot. Uh, one of the things I did do, though, to rule out anything out was um, I wanted to check all these micro switches and make sure they were good. Uh, and, of course, if you're going to do that, I, I know there's some advanced people on here probably that know all about this stuff. But if you're not and you just want to know, we're going to check continuity between the top and bottom. I'm going to depress the switch with these leads on here. Let me turn the alarm on so we can hear it. I'm going to test this one and this. Continuity. Close. That's a normally open continuity. Close. And okay. That switch is working correctly, and then we'll check the second one. Let's see what's going on with it. I don't know if you can hear that, but we get continuity there. And then on this third one, I'm going to check and make sure there's, now there's continuity. So all three of these micro switches are good. It looks like the contact is good now it's nice and clean and uh, I'm gonna put this back together if I can get it back together sometimes these are hard to get back together especially the old one when I took the old one apart it was uh, very difficult to get apart Let me put this on here, keeping all this stuff in line, being careful not to break off the... Break off the switches here. Don't press in on that and bust them loose. Now both bushings are in place, one on the inside here and one on the inside under here. So line this bolt up like this. We're going to push in because there's a spring in there. And when you push in, it exposes that location for that roll pin. And then on this, there's two washers. And I'm going to press down on this and start this roll pin.
Um, and we'll see if we can get it to go. A little bit of dielectric grease never hurt anything. I never seen anybody put it on here, but it seemed like it'll work to me. Anyway, so uh, we may or may not have salvaged this uh, Red Hawk switch. I guess we'll find out shortly. I'm going to go put it on the cart and see if I can get it to move. Um, be back. Okay, so I, I got the switch back on the cart, and we now have reverse, and we now have forward. So, um, you know, cleaning those contacts up, and uh, although the switch was was damaged uh, from some heat we were able to successfully clean it up polish up all those contacts um, I see some other issues here I need to redo the ends of both of these wires they're still covered but there's some swelling going on here um, I need to go ahead and clip these off and uh, hydraulically press on some more fittings um, but if you're uh, if you have a forward reverse switch that got hot, um, you know hopefully you're able to disassemble it like I've shown and clean it up and uh, make it work a little longer. Um, what I will say, you know, although I previously said Red Hawk uh, makes a pretty good switch, it, it's hard to find a good switch. Now Club Car no longer manufactures this part. So, um, you know, to find a good heavy duty one, there's a couple of options out there. Red Hawk being one of them. Um, let me just warn you, um, I bought this on Amazon. I've had it for two months. I contacted Amazon, uh, on the ad, it clearly says it has a one year warranty, uh, replacement warranty. Uh, so I figured, what the heck, I'm going to try to uh, get a new one, uh, sketchy maybe, but, you know, uh, it's a lot of money for a switch. I wanted to see if I could get a new one. Amazon refers me to Red Hawk. I went to Red Hawk's customer service, sent them an email, and I got an email back from Red Hawk. says, sorry about your luck. We don't honor a warranty if it's bought through Amazon. Now, Amazon is the, the reseller. They told me that they don't offer any warranties at all, and they're not even sure why Amazon refers them, uh, refers people to Red Hawk for any warranty work. I found that kind of strange um, based on the fact Red Hawk 
probably sells you know a large majority of their product on Amazon and they just flat out said we don't order we, we're not going to honor any warranty through any reseller such as Amazon so if you're going to buy one of these switches just keep that in mind um, now with that being said this switch is $119 on Amazon uh, if you buy it through a reseller, it's going to be about 140. Uh, I've seen it on several other sites, the exact same part. Um, now it remains to be seen whether or not they honor a warranty. Uh, I, I don't know, but for Amazon to, uh, resell something and post on the ad that they have a one year warranty, um, it's really disappointing. Um, I'm not going to take away from, I, I think that the quality of this Red Hawk switch is much better uh, than the cheap parts that are out there. Um, with all that being said, you know, you can salvage these switches. I don't know how much longer this one's going to last, but it's solid uh, and it's working fine. Um, anyway, I, I hope this helps some of you guys. Uh, if you're diagnosing a problem, um, this one in particular, uh, just a recap, it... Uh, it had forward but no reverse and from all I can tell uh, there's very few options I tested out the controller I tested out uh, all the connections um, and everything was good and it just didn't make sense to me at all why I couldn't get reverse because in this series card this reverse is not controlled through the controller like it is in an IQ cart now this applies to a controller series cart uh, a, a IQ series cart uh, reverse is controlled through the controller so if you're having an issue with reverse and you've ruled out everything else uh, in an IQ series cart it very well could be your controller and if you will look it up there's ways to test the output of your controller uh, both ways now I'm still thinking I have a, a intermittent problem with an M core um, I'm gonna do an M core 4 conversion since the M Core 1 is no longer available from Club Car, I want to go back with an OEM part. So uh, I'll be converting this one from M Core 1 to M Core 4. And we'll see if we can get any of that hesitation to go away. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope this helps. Um, give it a thumbs up and a subscribe if this helps. And feel free to comment. I'm learning every day. Thanks, guys.